I'm an old man now, but I remember. I remember all the adventures of my life. Sometimes it feels like it was yesterday, but it was long ago. Oh, how I wish I had a camera to capture all those memories. But this is what I have to offer now. I want to share with you a story, a tale, an adventure of how I met two men of not my blood who became my brothers. When you look at us, you'll think to yourself, they don't look like brothers. But when you search our heart and you see our soul, you'll see brothers. It's not a hard thing to make that transition. I surprise myself with that realization. When I consider all the dark roads that I've walked, all the heavy loads that I've packed, all the joy and love and the warmth of the sun on my face that I felt, the seasons of my years, I'm in a place now, a lovely, lovely place where my memory merges with reality embraced by dream. I learned to appreciate so many of the small things in life. How my wife holds me and kisses me. How my children look at me and smile. The feeling I feel in my soul when I see them my family, my brothers, my sisters. When I think of all the joy and all the gifts that this life has to offer, I can't help but wonder, how is it that man could have hate in his heart? In this story, in this adventure, an angel took us to a faraway place. This angel had hair of fire and wings of feathers. When she landed us on this lake, it was like a feather landing on a still pond. Yes, I felt safe. It was glorious. I want to tell you about how my brothers became brothers. And it's a really long story. So you're going to have to be patient. One of my brothers is from a bloodline, Irish and the other bloodline, Dutch, and me, Dam Lachaman. How does this work? Oh yes, life works in mysterious ways. But the love that we feel for each other is enough to know that we would lay our lives for each other and do what we have to do to support one another and our families. I hope, I hope and I pray that you will enjoy this and find the love in your heart and the brotherhood. The Brotherhood of Man. As in my time I've learned that life has a beginning and life 
has an end. So be good, be safe, and be kind. Love is free. We're off. We've been on the road for almost nine hours. We're just about halfway. Kevin doesn't talk. When the camera's on, when it's off, he never stops. Yeah, I can't shut him up. <laughs> but look at him. It's kind of nice to have some quiet time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. So we made it into uh, Watson Lake about, I don't know, what time was it? 1.30? 127, yeah. 127 a.m. I know you slowed down a lot for us, down to like 1.30. Yeah, that's so. right. <laughs> what you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's going to be flying us out to our epically uh, awesome trip. And so we got a bit of weather today. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to wait till tomorrow. Are we flying out tomorrow? And hopefully get you out to you. Your epically awesome spot. Yeah. For some caribou. Right behind Hidden Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Secret Lake behind Hidden Hill. Nanya Lake. Nanya. You're at the signs block in the Yukon. Look at this place. Very sad. They took down my sign. Day one hunting. How's it going, Jay? <laughs> you guys are something else. Day two. Still in the holding pattern. It stopped raining now, so that's encouraging, and it's uh, touch and go, I think, but I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get out. Like it's going to happen. Any last words before Don't we... It. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no last words yet. For Transport Canada's rules, you have to be wearing this. Yes, thank you. Base camp, guys. That took what? A few minutes. It's raining outside. The overcast came in when we landed. Well, you saw. You saw what the weather was. And now um, here we are, hunkered down in the we're gonna walk in that's where I was You guys are great ambassadors for Kuyu. <laughs> Jason's back there. Uh, let's see, I can't tell you where he is, but he's somewhere back there in the frame, somewhere around there. But you might see him move. Have you guys ever been to bed so early? <laughs> First morning. In camp. These guys got these nice cushy beds. I have to sleep on the ground. No sleeping bag. And they think it's funny. Look. <laughs> Look at that. Why? It's your lie that's funny. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> They're gonna eat in front of me too. They're heating up coffee. And they're not even gonna feed me. Well, I gotta say, breakfast tastes a lot better than I was anticipating this morning. <laughs> there it is. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. Amazing. 
The simple pleasures of life, isn't it? So we're ready to go? I think so. And that. Well, we're getting there, slow but sure. But you know, it's one foot in front of the other. We still need to climatize to this, this uh, elevation and to the strenuous work that's involved in uh, getting up this side hill. My brothers work so hard to get up the mountain. Eventually though, they caught up to me, but they couldn't sustain the pace forever. Well, if I'm epically Indian, check this out. <laughs> He's ethically Dutch. <laughs> he brought a chair. He brought a lawn chair. And it's so rewarding right now. I would do anything to give it to sit in it too. <laughs> well, if I knew if I uh, played my cards right and looked pitiful enough, I would have got my way. Look at this. <laughs> I think what we need to do though is maybe just cut a little hole in there, dig a hole underneath it. We're laughing. <laughs> Let's go to that mound. A little glass from there. I don't want to. <laughs> when Jason went to the mountain, I sat and watched. That's no patch. And there it was. Walked right up on me. I didn't even know he was coming. Terrible. Well, we're getting there. Just need to go find Jason. The same thing happened to Kevin. These caribou just walked right up on him. He had to freeze right where he was. The funny thing is he was on his hands and knees. What an amazing encounter. It really made us all so hopeful and made our prospects look so promising. I'm really impressed how Kevin's Kuyu camel just blended right into the environment. That caribou passed him at 30 yards, he said. But looking at this, it looks much closer. Heck, even I could have made that shot. But that wasn't the end of his encounter. More caribou showed and walked past him. Undetected. Oh my goodness, how much more? But there was more. Look at them. What an amazing encounter. That man is so blessed to have witnessed that with his own eyes. And I'm so happy that he shares it with us. That's a generous heart. Maybe one of these animals will give themselves up. We'll see. I'm gonna be out here uh, tonight. And it rained so hard last night, we decided that we'd lay our sleeping bags out, take our socks and boots off and dry everything out while it's sunny, and just relax to give ourselves some time to, you know, just calm down with all the excitement today. You know, part of being epic is the journey. Uh, good company, good food, rice and chicken, and Jason made me a lovely cup of tea. Mmm, nature's nectar, I'm telling you. Thank you, Jay. Oh, this looks so good. You know, when you're hungry, bologna tastes like steak. Jason wasn't deterred by the fact he didn't see any caribou all day. So he went out after dinner and on his return, this is what he saw, a magnificent animal. 
Here's to you guys. It's been a great day. Had uh, I don't know how many miles we put on today. At least two. And uh, <laughs> you know, so all this country already. You know, the greatest thing about being epic is the friends you make. Cheers. Well, pop. I wish you were here. Here's a sunset for you. You would love this trip. Oh, my comrades have gone to bed. And there's a caribou over my shoulder. There's a little rock patch in there somewhere and it's on that end of the uh, rock patch. I doubt very much you'll see it. But I hope that place is loaded with caribou tomorrow. And I want these guys to have their pick. Bedtime's always a welcome time of the day for me. And my lean-to was perfect accommodation. Tucked away, snuck as a book in a rug. Check this view out. Good night. It's a little frosty this morning. The light's gonna be good here pretty quick. Hopefully we'll see some caribou down here on this flat. Today's the day. Just looking down into this valley, seeing if I can see any early movement, early morning movement. <clears throat> it's so beautiful. Check this out. Sun's gonna be up soon. And he's sharing his cup of tea with me. So thank you, Jason. So uh, today, the plan is find a caribou and uh, get somebody in position to uh, take a shot. Good luck, Kevin. Good luck today. Well, it's a solo hunt today. I'm really, really hoping that I'm going to intercept a caribou. And that's probably my best chance right there, is just to intercept them as they're migrating. So, because um, I can't reach out past 30 yards. And 30 yards doesn't cover much ground in this area. I mean, look at it. I set up in the same place as before, and this guy crossed in front of me. Well, that's the second caribou that went by me in this uh, very location. And uh, both were on the same, uh, same path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over there, just in case, you know, some big bull comes cruising by. And, Within arrow range, find a rock to hide behind and wait. Never know. You just never know. Man, these guys are moving. That guy is a young bull, but uh, he just kept going, trotting the whole, the whole way. Stop, feed, trot, stop, feed, trot. Really impressive how much ground they can cover in no time. My decision proved to be promising. Look at that. I think these caribou winded me. They're crossing from left to right. And it was close. I think I will wait here for a while. That's for my binoculars. Best I could do, I'm sorry. <laughs> we lost radio contact with Jason, so I'm on the hunt for Jason now. So I'm gonna go where I saw him last. He said he was gonna drop down and come around to the uh, to the west side valley there but I uh, haven't seen him emerge so I'm hoping he's okay just having a nap because I know he didn't sleep very well last night. Wish Knowing me luck. my brother's pack is well equipped I packed light. He'll have all the necessary equipment in case of an emergency. Well, I found him right where I thought he wasn't. <laughs> he stuck out like a sore thumb he wasn't wearing his hat. <laughs> 10 and no caribou. 
We've seen plenty of cows and uh, some immature bulls, but nothing mature yet. So uh, it's late in the day. We're going to spend another night up here and see what tomorrow morning brings. Nikki, thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to share. Get your head in here. <laughs> I'm going to share with these guys. Thank it's you, like, Nikki. <laughs> I, I was listening to Jason's Jesus music today and it put it in my heart. Share your fish, you cheap bastard. <laughs> I love you, Nikki. There you go, Nikki. We're doing it right. Cup of tea. Huh? Thank you. You're with us up here. Now, get us a caribou. <laughs> because we haven't been able to see any bulls. But here we are eating sockeye salmon out of the Skeena River up on the mountain range. That's pretty awesome. Mmm. Thank you. That's a good groceries. That portion of the mountain looks translucent. Look at that. Well, I'm tucked away for the night. Snug as a bug in the rug. Breezy last night. Woke up quite a few times. Sunshine over here. Hopefully, some caribou right over there. Well, it's cold and windy. Jason feels like it's gonna snow, his bones are aching. We did see caribou. At this point, our spike camp is all packed up and we decide that we're gonna separate. Jason's feet are so blistered, he's heading back to boot camp. Gotta make yourself comfortable when you're glassing. It'd be nice to have a spotting scope though. Yeah. And I could look at those a little bit closer. Look at, yeah, look at those uh, caribou up there and see if that's a goat which is lying there or a boulder. Well, the thing is, is patience. Patience, patience, patience. Those animals, they don't owe you a god dang thing. You know, somebody's going to step out and give their life up and we're gonna have a good meal. Yes. See the cheeks of our kids grow. Nice and chubby. And while he's glassing, I'm just gonna have a nice little snooze. And snooze I did. I had a beautiful dream of caribou. Those caribou were so far away then all of a sudden they were right there in front of me. Gee, I want to look closer and closer, and I did. My dream just carried me away. Oh, dreaming's a beautiful thing. Keep your dreams alive. So we were just sitting here, and we had those caribou just walk right on us. <laughs> they were 100 yards? 100 yards? Yeah. Like, here we are, busting our legs, just cruising all over the mountainside and decide, okay, we'll just hunker down and watch and what happens. We have two nice caribou come out. I mean, if we were starving, we wouldn't be going hungry, I can tell you that. Nope. nope. Caribou on the platter. And the three more just up there. Yeah, three over there. Got two across the valley there. You got the herd that we left up top and more down in, on the other end of this valley. So we've decided that we're just gonna hunker down and wait, wait till the sun is like somewhere over there. Right now it's right there. Yeah. So we got a few hours, but we're ready. We got groceries, <laughs> we have food, we got tea, we have fuel to burn some water. Yeah. Look at those caribou. Oh, so this exciting! Is Watch for caribou. Base camp. 
That's Jason McKee on the other side of the fire. Dancing in fire. That's his new name. Dancing in fire. Oh, look at that guy go. <laughs> Do it again, Jay. Oh, you're right. The music moves you, but it moves you ugly. <laughs> Watch the real moves. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Come on. I'm no better. <laughs> Bust a move. You're dancing like crazy up there. Are your feet sore? I think my feet are Stop. sore. Well, tomorrow's going to be another day, of course. If we all wake up, <laughs> it's not a guarantee, that's for sure. So enjoy it while you have it. <laughs> Come on! I can tell you, I'm very thankful for this TP. Yeah. yeah, me too. I'm thankful for... I don't know how a porcupine smells. Well, Nikki, I can't not share, so <laughs> thank you again. And the boys want to thank you. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> See? They do better, but their mouths are full of fish. Today's forecast cloudy and rainy. Saturday, cloudy and rainy. That's it. That's all it tells me. Uh. I have another forecast. Today, Jason shoots a seven point bull. Today, Kevin shoots a five point bull. Today, Aubrey sees some new country. Almost halfway. So the fun stuff we get to walk through. Yeah. This stuff is just jungle. Can't even use my walker. No. It's just a big tangle of what Jason and I just separated. He's gonna walk the base of that mountain. And I'm going up top of that one. I'll show you. The one behind me there. So I'm going over that ridge. And uh, hopefully I'll see something. But um, given that I'm bow hunting, if I see a moose, I'm going to take it. Caribou, that's legal. I'll take it. And... Uh, and of course a mountain goat, if I get a chance, so I'm hunting, hopefully get some meat. We're on day six, day six of ten, so yeah, we're halfway through. Getting there, I'm pretty excited about this trip. I feel positive about it, like I'm going to have a close encounter with something. Hopefully not a grizzly. That would uh, be really terrifying. I'm getting there. Poke poco, hey pop. Poke poco. Okay, we'll be right over there. And two of them, I think there's five or six legal bolts. They're significantly bigger than the others. So I'm just going to hunker down here for a bit and see what they do. Maybe make a move on them. So I am making a move. They're out of sight. I'm out of sight. I'm going to use a stream bank as my cover. So I'll traverse the bank and hopefully see what they're doing. I have a feeling they're going to move to my uh, right here. And I'm thinking... I might move that way, but I gotta figure out which way the wind is blowing. Oh man. Whew. I'm excited. I'm really excited. If I do get the opportunity, I hope I make that shot. Oh my goodness. I truly hope I make that shot. Man's a good time to take my bow off. Might be within 250 yards of those guys. It's 
still can't see them. But they are, they are around. Got the wind directly at my back. And they are over there. I have to be careful here so I don't get winded. But definitely have my bow in hand in case I have an opportunity. Oh, the wind changed. It's in my face. Let's go. That's where I saw them. They're heading right for that little uh, point there. Let's see my feather. I'm hoping that they don't circle around up there. But there's no way to know. Just gotta. Make a decision on the information that you have and hope it's a good one and that it works out. So, I'm really hoping that this works. Use my cover and concealment as much as possible. That's really important. And because I'm out of, uh, out of their sight, I'm hoping I'll be able to close the distance. Even if I can get into a position where I can watch them and just see where they um, bed down and, you know, you never know. I, I, bow hunting, like you got to be close, really close. Like from here to the gold tree behind me. I hope it's gonna happen. I feel like it's gonna happen. Let's go. And this wind is really swirling up here. I'm worried that they caught my wind. I haven't broken over the to see where they went, but not my wind carrying me the carrying my scent that way now. They're over there. They're heading heading in that direction. But I'll finish the hunt because I don't know what the wind's doing over there. Could be being pulled up. I feel like I'm close. I'll meet up here, Scalpy. Finish my hunt. I may still have a chance. This wind, this wind is crazy. It's everywhere. Wish me luck. Good news. They're right over there. The wind's in my face. And that one looks like a big, a big bull. I'm gonna belly up here and see if I can get a better look. They're looking right in my direction. All I can see is the top of their antlers. I am so close and yet so far. And I can't say for sure, but one of those bowls looks legal. And I really don't want to blow them out of here. None of them are legal, so I'm just going to have some fun, see what I can do with them. I'm going to end up blowing them out of here, but who knows, I'm going to go up in some more. The wind's coming this way. If I can get around them, I might be able to get some better footage. Well, I'm back in my pack now. Those guys are still laying down over there. It's like a cow. and three bowls, maybe four bowls, and I um, haven't really been able to get a really good look at them just because of the topography, so, um, but I mean stalking in on, on all of them while they're sitting and watching, uh, impossible. So I'm hoping that if there is a legal one there that he's just going to meander by me. In the meantime, I'm going to get super comfortable. 
and wait for them. They definitely winded me or something. I couldn't see the points with my eight power from there. I don't think I'll be able to see them from here. Might as well have a look though. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, um, the wind changed after I got my uh, rain gear on and um, in their favor. And they blew out of there. As you could see, they just went trotting, but they were really confused for quite a while and they trot back and forth and down and up and really uh, putting their nose into the wind and then they decided to take the high ground and left the basin. I was really hoping that one of those bulls was going to be legal and uh, was going to be able to get a shot but that's hunting. You know, I, um, I did what I could do. Uh, if it was legal and I had a rifle, we'd be eating caribou. But not legal and I have a bow. Not just any bow, but I have the Wolverine by Carey bow. Check this out. Uh, let's see, can you see that? That might be upside down for you. But it's a gorgeous bow and um, it just didn't happen for me today. So. But the day is young and I'm going to sit up here and have some lunch. I've checked out the basin and I see more, car more caribou there. But um, I'll just report that back to the guys tonight. I'm going to stick with the plan and uh, get on the other side of this mountain that, uh, that I'm at the base of now. and. See what's on the other side. It could be just like caribou paradise. But we'll find out when I get there. And it could be a desolate bear land. But you stick to the plan. That's the plan. So here you go. A day like this. The weather's so unstable. That was a pretty good gust. You caught the tail end of it. So, uh, I'm nearing the ridge, and uh, I found those uh, fresh caribou tracks. So those caribou came up here. I'm gonna look over this. But before I make a break over, I'm gonna catch my breath. I well, found a nice little hole to tuck myself into here. A little blistery out. I hope the uh, wind settles down, but I want to take a nice, uh, nice break and just, you know, cool down. I don't want to be sweating. I can feel myself. I'm not like sweating, but I can feel my perspiration from the work coming up that, uh, up that uh, side hill. Yeah, there's uh, eight or nine caribou on the ridge. There, a couple of them look like healthy bulbs, but with my 8 power binoculars, I just cannot see what it is. And uh, I'm not going to take a walk up there. Tomorrow's another day. It's getting late in the afternoon. It's going to be 4.30, maybe close to 5. I probably have enough time to get back to 
base camp and uh, have a nice meal and talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. So maybe we'll come back up here. It's a nice area, it's a big area. But, um, you know, I've looked around and I haven't really seen a lot of other uh, caribou other than those eight. I'll tell you, these caribou just appear out of nowhere. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. But one of those caribou looks totally legal. And today, I saw... I think 28 caribou, surrounded by caribou. It doesn't look like any of them are legal, but I gotta keep moving to make it back before dark. So we're just looking down some different valleys from uh, from the past and um, hoping that we're gonna see some more mature bulls coming in from the trees and uh, hopefully we'll intercept one or two. It might be my lucky day. Think of that. I'm hoping so. Uh -huh. That'd be epic. That would be epic. Mmm. Thank you, Nikki. That is delicious. You'll be happy to know. I'm going to share this out with our ancestors. As your grandpa used to say, lazy guys don't eat this stuff. <laughs> we went to bed on a starry night and middle of the night we woke up to the tent just being pelted yep. with rain and that did not let up for hours. I was worried that we were going to be sleeping in puddles this morning, but uh, fortunately we didn't. We woke up with nice, dry sleeping bags, but this ground in this tent never dries. We've had fires in here and it just doesn't dry. Not at all. Had sunny days and it didn't dry. Yeah. This is a wet place, so if you're going to come to a place where you're hunting caribou, bring a good ground sheet like my friend Jason there and take up lots of real estate in the tent. <laughs> Jason's checking the weather. I know what the weather's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be rain. 100% chance of rain. 100% chance of wind. Easy to 99%. <laughs> well, we just got a little break in the rain. I'd really hate to get stuck on the mountain in the fog and ice. Oh, Kevin, if it gets foggy up there, just come back because there's no sense dying for it caribou or anything when we have better weather coming at some point whether we're going to be here or not that's a whole other a whole other uh, question time will tell day 8 of 10 the weather is foul blowing hard raining hard the boys are out I'm worried about them Clouds are moving in. It was like this all night last night. Went to bed with clear starry skies and woke up about the middle of the night and it started with this and uh, it's been on and off like this all day. Just like that. And um, I'm doing what I can to stay warm here in the tent. I wish the guys would have stayed back with me but they're bent on getting out there and maximizing their time here. Yeah, I'm worried about them. Anybody got their ears on? I don't know if you guys can hear me, but it's time to come home. We uh, look bad up in the mountains from here, and uh, I can tell you that it's windy and rainy here, and uh, just come on back. Give this day to the caribou. You guys got your ears on? Jason, K. 
Kevin. How are you making out out there? Well, Kevin, I'm on top of the bill. I was looking, what's going to come up the bill? I don't know if I'm going to see if that is. Things will get up and we're going to do it. Otherwise, I'm heading, I'll head back down. I'll start making my way. Yeah, the weather is pretty foul. I would uh, recommend you come back uh, as soon as possible. Ten four. I'm going to keep this radio on and hopefully hear from Jason. Ten nine. I'm going to keep my radio on. Ten four. That was Kevin. He's at the back of the bowl and he's going to be making his way back here. Um, he just wants to see if there's any bulls up there, and I, um, yeah, I just want him back here. <laughs> Jesus. Aubrey's calling from base camp. He said uh, it's getting worse, so I'm gonna start heading down. But just up there, I uh, came within 50 yards of a bedded herd, and there was at least one uh, four by three, so almost legal, but not quite. So that was so cool. I could have had him nice, he was only 50 yards away. But yeah, it's gorgeous up here. Um, scenery wise, not so much weather. I'm gonna start making my way down. Jason, you got yours on yet? Jason, if you can read me. Make sure making your way back to camp. Jason, can you pick me up? Jason, come in. So it's been about half an hour since our scheduled time. Checking with each other. And I haven't had a response from uh, Jason. Might have been Jason. Our radios are having trouble communicating with each other. Jason, can you pick me up? You're completely unreadable, Jason. Completely unreadable. If you can hear this message, I'm recommending that you come back to base camp right away, as soon as possible. I'm hoping that was Jason that keyed his mic. But it doesn't look like it. It must have been Kevin. Because Jason's icon hasn't moved. You can see that. That was the last time Jason keyed his mic. We were together. That's my symbol and his symbol. Now he's got me worried. 
not unusual but with the weather the way it is and uh, the fact that he doesn't have rain pants really concerns me and uh, he's got bad blisters on his feet so I hope I hope he just comes back. You on there, Jason? Yeah, I bet I am. 10 9? I am here. Are you there? <laughs> I'm there. I'm there at camp. Out of the wind. How are you making out? I'm sitting on the shooter. Gonna head back to camp and I'm done. Ten four. What's your ETA? Oh, probably half an hour, forty five minutes. Ten four. We'll see you when you get here. Yeah, Kevin, do you have an ETA? I'm just at the top of it. Uh, the bottom end of the... Sorry, the bottom end of where? Ten nine, Kevin. The bottom end of where? Just heard the bell. Ten four. Thank you. No, well, the guys are okay, and they're coming back. And uh, you heard Jason sitting in the shitter, then his day is done. He's coming back, so I suspect he's, yeah, not too far away. Half an hour, he says. That's a long poop. <laughs> Especially in this weather. Well, I put hot water on for the guys when they get back. Try to get things somewhat organized so they're not having to do a lot to, to unpack their packs and take their ring gear off and you know, just a little preparations like that make a big difference, especially when you're cold, tired, and wet. Yeah, just having somebody there to take care of you. So, I'm really glad that they're both okay and that they're both on their way back here. And, um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, anyway, I'm glad. Oh, yes. I remember that day well. I was so worried, but I couldn't be more happy when they arrived home. First Jason, he's trying to talk to me. I couldn't hear a thing he was saying here. The wind was filling my ears. Poor guy just staggering around. His legs won't work. Cold. Come on in, Jason. Be warm. And then Kevin showed up a short time later. And he was so happy his spirits were up. And I don't blame him. He's telling me he came 50 yards away from a herd. And one of those bulls was almost legal. Common story in this trip. Almost legal. But... Alas, it didn't happen. So Jason's been communicating with Rachel about getting us off the mountain. I uh, just gave her an update. That might be her buzzing again. But uh, so we have winds that are uh, steady 25, gusting 40, uh, coming from the west. And um, her plane is down. So she's going to have to get somebody else to uh, fly in and, and pick us up. And the latest is that they're going to be here in about an hour. So that doesn't give us a lot of time to pack up. 
However, with that being said, um, it's not going to take very long to pack up. And alas, we're leaving this place. Well, it's confirmed. The plane is going to be here in about 45 minutes. And we got some stuff to pack up. Look at this. Frantic. Frantic. Yeah. Totally relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Listen, Rachel got us there safely. Sebastian got us back safely because <laughs> Rachel's plane is misbehaving. But I want to thank you guys. <laughs> Sebastian, you come? come a little bit closer together. So there we go. Fly <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's a nice picture. So uh, thank you very much. It was a fantastic week. It's or, awesome to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Nice meeting you, nice yeah. meeting you. Good yeah. landing, by the way, both of you. Epic landing up there, okay. epic landing right here. <laughs> like, I, when you were banking, I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. And then just cushion down. Nice. Oh, that's great. So that's what you want in the pilot. Confidence and competence. And great hair. Beauty. <laughs> I brushed it today, so I'm, I'm really, I'm honored. I'm really worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back in Watson Lake. And uh, the trailer that we stayed in with Jason's friends is missing. And then his friends are missing. But Jason knows where they are. At, uh, what's the name of the valley? Nahani. Nahani Valley. And uh, we suspect that our luggage is still there. I sure hope so because my wallet's in there too. <laughs> and they'll give us a chance to have a nice visit with them. Say thank you. It was an adventure. For sure, and our brotherhood has been strengthened. And I've been told that Nanya Lake froze up shortly after, and that several hunters are stranded in the weather. So be good, be safe, and be kind.